All right. Now, it's, you know, I enjoy social media. We're involved. I'm on Twitter, VOC Mobile Line. Follow us there. But some days it is cesspool. Some days it's just so troubling. And it is sometimes completely and utterly disgraceful. And yesterday was one of those days. And that was brought on because of the tragedy occurred in Mitchell's broke up Mount Carmel, St. Mary's Bay, the shooting death of 59 year old Don Dunphy. Everybody knows the story by now. The unfortunate reality is here that it has got so many complicated layers and so many unknowns, more questions and answers available. Some of that is because of a police investigation that will be, of course, mandatory, critical. How it's going to be conducted and by who will be a big question. But there's still many questions that people are asking, and justifiably so. The Easter Sunday bit. Why was there a lone plain clothes? police officer in an unmarked car at somebody's home unannounced on an Easter Sunday. Okay. Just, these are just my own opinions. The Easter Sunday bit, I don't know if, uh, to me it's got to be the most irrelevant part of the story. If the cop in question was on regular scheduled shift, and that's when he decided he would follow up, then Easter Sunday it is. We can only hope law enforcement doesn't mail it in on the recognized holidays from Christmas Day to Easter Sunday to any other day of the calendar. Okay. But it's a good question. How and why, when responding to investigate a threat or a perceived threat on Twitter, how does one police officer end up on that call? It's a really important question, mostly because not only about security and protocol and procedure, but now when we have a shooting death, the only person left standing is the cop in question. So no witnesses to what actually happened. That'll be an important part of this conversation, as you're well aware. So it's an excellent question. Did Mr. Dunphy point his gun? We'll never know any more than what the police officer tells us. That's a problem. The investigation of this particular incident will be very controversial. The Royal Newfoundland Constabulary and the RCMP are separate independent law enforcement agencies except... The fact that they have a working relationship on several files, the newly created task force for drugs and gangs and stuff, they deal with child protection issues in a mutual affair or arrangement. So we can say that they are independent from each other and that a China wall will be put up so that the RCMP can conduct an investigation without interference from the RNC, without interference from the Confederation building. Can we put that type of faith in any law enforcement agency when this is such a matter of critical importance? The public needs to know. Don't be surprised. Now, the RNC doesn't have it up to their druthers to say, okay, we'll bring in the OPP. Because of the fact that the crime, or the issue, the shooting, I don't know how to refer to it, took place in RCMP jurisdiction. Which also leads us to ask, why weren't the RCMP the one conducting the follow-up? I know the air of this gentleman here in question, the police officer, was part of the premier security team. But the RCMP may be more familiar with Mr. Dunphy. And why was that not the approach taken? Important questions. Now, and we'll find out in time, I guess. The real problem here, and what we cannot lose sight of, is that we have the victim, Mr. Dunphy, at 59 years of age, who, without question, regardless of where your political bias and agenda and horrendous willingness to stand on his grave to make your partisan points, and those of you out there doing it, should be absolutely embarrassed of yourself. I mean, the way people conduct themselves yesterday was atrocious. Davis says he was unaware of the threat, and he didn't find out anything about it until the man was dead. Do you believe Davis or not? That's up to you. But suggestions that Davis sent out a cop to shut down, to quiet or kill a citizen is horrendous. I mean, that's extraordinary, beyond belief. Look, we're going to have more people investigated because of this. And I did learn yesterday that some of the partisans out there are maniacs. And I can't, I'm so sick of you, I can't even put it into words. We also heard and figured out yesterday some of you are bloody dangerous the things you say. 
And don't be surprised when you get a knock on the door. And do yourself a favor. It wasn't the threat that saw Mr. Dunphy killed. It was the fact, as we're told by all accounts right now, without the investigation having been concluded, that the threat on Twitter, or the perceived threat on Twitter, didn't get him killed. Pointing a gun at a police officer got him killed. Every time someone points a gun at a cop, only one thing or two things might happen. One person will be dead, or two people will be dead. That's pretty much the bare bones. But now to the important matter. Mr. Dunphy was betrayed by all of us. Mr. Dunphy was betrayed by the government. He was betrayed by Workplace Health and Safety Compensation Commission. He was betrayed by some of the services that we have in our social safety net. He was alone and frustrated and angry and had spiraled to a level of despair that was unmanageable for anybody, including Mr. Dunphy. We look to government to save our lives. And some of that is because they're the easy place to point your finger. We can blame them for everything. There's no glory in good governance. There's only blame available when you don't go far enough to do what you need to do to provide the level of service for the citizens of the province in this case. Okay. Dunphy was left to his own devices. I don't know what mental health issues he may or may not have had, but I do know that he felt alone in this world, and we're blaming it on the government, when in fact, I think, from where I sit, we all share some responsibility here. As members, and this, I'm not trying to be cheesy or corny or over the top, and I'm not some sort of wild, off-my-head left-winger who has got all of these flower utopian comments to make, but some of these are real, and this is what I feel. We've got far too many people here who are trying to drag each other down. We've got far too many people here who yesterday were their biggest concern on the face of the earth was Don Dunphy, but two days prior didn't give a shit about Don Dunphy one way or the other. Didn't reach out to him, didn't help him, didn't ensure that he and others like him, thousands across the province, maybe tens of thousands across the province today, who are in need of some pick-up, a leg-up, a hand-up, some concern, compassion, and empathy from their fellow citizens. And we turn a blind eye to it and a deaf ear. And so we can blame workplace health and safety, and you can blame Davis, you can blame Judy Manning, you can stand on his grave, and you can say whatever you said uh, after the fact. But we don't do enough for each other each and every day, and it's a bloody well-documented fact. Now, if someone's calling me out on the fact the gun was pointed at the cop, I said quite clearly, as we have heard in media reports so far, that's what we understand. We don't know, and will we ever know? I don't know. But the fact remains, there was guns in the house. Dunphy had one to where it was in proximity to him, in his hand, pointed at the cop. I don't know. But all I do know is the man is dead. And we all play some small role in what led to that. So give me a break now. I'm not overstepping. I don't know the facts. I don't pretend to know them. I'm trying to be very careful here when it comes to commenting on what we do or do not know. But we do know the man is dead. And that many of you yesterday who went hog wild and made it a political issue. Some of you should be friggin' embarrassed. I mean, come on. What are you like at all? Right? And you know your number one concern was Don Dunphy yesterday. It wasn't on Saturday. And there's some people close by that I don't know if they ever paid one iota of attention to the man. Had no idea how he was suffering, how he felt, what they could or could not do to help him out. So it's, I don't know whose fault it is. Ultimately, but I do know there's a lot of people out today feel just like Don Dunphy did on Saturday morning before that cop showed up at his door. A lot of them. And we owe them better. That includes the government, but it also includes all of us. And I'm not preaching that. You do whatever the hell you like. And you can reach out and be as compassionate or charitable as you see fit or not. But, boy, some of you out there. Davis should resign. Davis sent a man out to execute a citizen. <sighs> Let's keep rolling. Line one. Good morning, caller. You're on the air. Good morning, Petty. How are you this morning? Not too bad. Good. A bit disturbed to hear about that poor gentleman that was shot to death. Yeah, of course we all are. Yeah, that's amazing. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, Petty, it's not surprising. How's that? I'm the gentleman that stood up in front of Brian Tobin's door on Waterford Bridge Road. Okay. My only weapon was an artist's paintbrush. And I had an officer stand behind me, put the gun to my head, and said, if you move, 
I'm going to shoot you. So, wait now, you were standing there. I remember the story. Uh, you were standing in Tobin's driveway with a brush, a bristle brush, a painting brush, and an, an as artist, a result, you had a An artist's brush. What is an artist's brush? It's a paintbrush, is it? No, it was a, one that an art person would use doing artwork. Okay, what is that? What is that? Uh, what does this look like? An art brush as opposed to a paintbrush? Oh, it's a little tiny thin brush, probably so, the size of a pencil. Okay, so a little paintbrush. Okay. Yes. All right. Go ahead. And uh, at no time did my toe ever entered Brian Tobin's property. Okay. And the only thing that I put on the poles, I put three red crosses. And the three red crosses, my coat of arms has a red cross, and that's why I did it. Okay. And the reason why I did it, I am an injured worker, and I was drove around the bend and back again. Teddy, I could walk into a walk-in, uh, I, wa I went into a walk-in freezer, I, inha I inhaled Freon. It partially froze the lungs until I went into cardiac arrest. Okay. It uh, damaged the top of the heart. One year later, I had my second heart attack due to the damage that occurred in my first heart attack. Workers' compensation told me because it didn't happen on the job, your second heart attack, we're not going to cover you. But yet, I would never have had my second heart attack only for the damage that occurred in my first heart attack. And workers' compensation, Patty, they'll drive you around the bend. And you know the sad part about this, Patty? What's that? They use this Newfoundland constabulary against the injured workers. And I'll give you an example. I was in uh, Okay. I was in hospital and a policeman came in and I said to the policeman, I said, Sir, can you tell me a question? I said, if I had a child, I said, and that child was denied heart medication, which it needed because the, the, his heart was damaged due to an industrial accident. I said, what would happen to me if I denied that child? He said, you'll be arrested. Well, I said, how come workers' camp is not arrested? Paddy, I could walk into a pharmacy. God knows the stress I was dealing with after two heart attacks. And uh, me, Paddy, never in trouble all my life. I worked 23 years, Paddy, with the one company. And after this happened, I was treated like a pig. I could walk into a pharmacy, and Paddy, I would come out shaking because workers were after cutting me off my uh, heart medication again. And Dr. Taylor toll workers' compensation, I'm supposed to be on that medication for the rest of my life. Okay, so when you say that the Workers' Compensation Commission uses the RNC to do what? Pardon me, how did you put that? They use the RNC to roughneck an injured worker. And I'll give you a prime example, Paddy. All right. I had that gentleman stand behind me and intimidate me with a handgun saying he was going to shoot me. And the gun pointed at my head. And so you filed a complaint? No, I didn't. That's not the best for Paddy. Just listen. After I was arrested, they put plastic bags on the poles because they didn't want public to see the Red Crosses. The Red Cross, Paddy, was put on the pole to uh, stimulate Brian Tobin's conscience as to what he's doing to injured workers. Paddy, that was a very, very peaceful protest. No harsh words were said to Brian Tobin, came out of my mouth. I never put one toe on his property, but yet I was treated like a pig. And I'll give you, they put me into Waterford Hospital, Paddy, for, for uh, one week's observation, correct? All right. I can understand that. I had an, uh, I had an officer come in to me, and God is my witness, Paddy. There was me and another gentleman in the lunchroom. This officer came in. He stood up in front of a door, put his two hands on the, 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 the doorway, and he roared at us, you effing pigs, you know? Okay. Keep this room clean. And anyway, Paddy, I went out after the officer. What it is, Paddy, you're hired to uh, probably work in there, but this guy, as far as I'm concerned, was hired to send in to rough me up. Paddy, I used to have to wear a special brace because I had six hernias. All right, yeah. And I stood up to the man. I said, excuse me, sir. I said, I ain't no pig. And Paddy, with that, he put his arms down to his side. He ran at me and butted me with his chest. Yeah, I don't know. So did you complain? Was there an investigation? Paddy, how can you complain, Paddy? You, when you, you make a complaint. 
That's how you complain. Uh, Eddie? What? How can you complain when they're going to say they're going to shoot you? And how can you complain when they put you in, in an environment like the Waterford Hospital for 30 days observation, right. and then when you're in there, you they're, they're assaulting you? Well, then you make a complaint, right? You know. Daddy, you know, who am I going to complain to? The, the people that are the, the, the people that are assaulting there's me. No, there's a, a specific organization to complain about the way police treat you. I mean, that well, is there. It's available. You well, know? Teddy, if, it was, if it would happen to me, I'd complain. Well, I'd lodge a formal complaint. Teddy, I didn't know that. Well, it's there. Yeah. Uh, sir, I I thought you had to go to the police, and I said to myself, well, how it's can an, I go to the police? But it, there are the people that are hurting you. It's a branch of the police. When uh, when I get a chance here during the show this morning, I'll get Ryan to give you a call back. I'll give you some contact info. Okay, uh, I'll give you one more. Very quickly, because i got to go. Yeah, one more instance, Patty. The situation, right. anyway, ended up where I lost my home, lost everything. Terrible. Lost everything. And I was uh, disciplined by the Newfoundland Constabulary. And far as I'm concerned, like I said to you, injured workers out there, my son, are like Jesus Christ. And, 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 and uh, the Newfoundland Constabulary, they're like Roman soldiers. They'll crucify you. Well, uh, and that's your personal experience, and I can't deny whatever happened to you because it didn't happen to me. Uh, I appreciate your call this morning, and I uh, hope all is well. Stay in touch. But I will indeed try to get you some contact info this morning. Thank you, sir. Okay, buddy. All the best. Bye-bye. Welcome back to the show. Let's go to line two. Good morning, Clarissa. You're on the air. Oh, hi, Patty. Hi there. How you doing? Not too bad. How about you? Oh, not too bad. Good. I'm just calling about everybody getting gun happy and trigger happy, as in poor Mr. Dunphy shot dead over his uh, choice of satire words. He never got shot. Um, well, okay. So, pardon. Go ahead. Also, uh, another solution. Go shoot the moose. Everybody wants to shoot something, and everybody's blaming somebody for something. Uh, are, are you being serious, Teresa? <laughs> I'm being a little, uh, actually, metaphorical satire mm. myself. Good. But uh, I think everybody uh, should calm down and stop blaming each other. Well, I mean, someone got shot, right? I mean, there's going to have to be some, not only investigation, but people will uh, want to blame somebody for what happened and who that gets the blame, whether it be the process leading up to the police officer knocking on Dumphy's door or what happened in the yeah. home. I mean, someone is going to feel the vast majority of the blame here because someone was killed. I mean, someone was shot yeah, dead. Yes, but we'll never know the truth, Patty. Why? So we're, there were we're only two people in that home that day. So we're immediately assuming then, uh, if, and forgive me if I'm wrong and, and set me straight, you're, you're saying that there was something untoward happened because if, if the officer... If he, if he comes out and says that Duffy pointed a gun at me, I shot him, then people are just not going to believe him. Is that what you figure is going to happen? Uh, we just will never know. I think it's going to be like split. Everybody's going to be thinking something different. Well, they're either going to think That's one of two things. Either he defended himself or he willfully shot a man dead. So yeah, there's because no gray it's so area. easy to frame somebody as in lay a gun next to him and say, yeah, uh, the man pulled the gun out. So, so I shot him dead. It's interesting. Do you think that there would be there's police officers who would go to the home of a 59 year old man who was in poor not. physical condition, uh, willing to and wanting to go in and kill him? Like, I mean, is that what we're thinking? Uh, that sounds a bit. I'll, that give, you, I'll oh, give you. I'll give you a good point. Okay, go ahead. Mr. Dunphy, he addressed uh, something in a satire manner. Uh, he picked on those politicians just as the fact that they were mocking the poor. Uh, do we all have to censor our words and practice hegemony so that uh, anybody with opposition, we don't have to worry about getting shot down by the government? See, now, don't you think that them? is completely ridiculous thing to say, Teresa? Don't you? Don't, doesn't that sound just completely offside when it comes out of your mouth? I think it sounds ridiculous, but it I is think ridiculous. it's That's also why. plausible. Uh, watch the purge. I think we're coming for a cleansing. I don't know. What does that mean? Is this biblical or? No, no, no. Well, what is it? Uh, everybody's blaming the poor. Uh, but what about the government that spent the money like drunken sailors and now we're in debt? And the poor is blaming the poor is and the working poor blaming the people on disability. And now we even have a euthanasia law. As in everybody's blaming everybody. But they're not looking at the right people. Look at the people that put us in debt. Look at the people that misspend the money. And I think that's what Mr. Dunphy was getting at. And poor Mr. Dunphy, he'll never, ever be able to speak another word. Right. And uh, no, I'm not 
saying that everybody is going to go into a mass anarchy. No. Or no. that it's a conspiracy. I'm just saying that we probably will never know the truth of what happened to Mr. Dunphy that day on Easter Sunday. It's hard to disagree with that. There was only two people in the room that day. One is dead. So. Yes. And I have a very vivid imagination, so I can uh, imagine the plausible. I can imagine even a, a mystery book scenario. Uh, but, it'd be a pretty boring book. Just cop knocked on the door, <laughs> one walked out. You know, that's kind of uh, it wouldn't be a boring book. Uh, if uh, poor Mr. Dumpy stumbled upon something and he was going to reveal it. Say that again? What? If Dunphy poor what? Mr. Dumpy yeah. stumbled upon something that he should not have stumbled upon. So it's an execution. Uh, it was a hit. It could be. See, be, if I, mean, you I, I, don't to, say, I, I don't know to say that. If you wanted to use your imagination. That's exactly what that is. That is some pretty uh, pretty imaginative conversation that uh, you're entertaining there now. So, I mean, I read people, I heard people tell me this yesterday, too, that Dunphy had stumbled upon some top-secret stuff that was going to expose either the premier or the party or someone or other, and as a result that they sent out a hit squad to execute the man. You know, well, I'm not saying that. Well, you did There's say that. That's exactly what you said. That's exactly I what you just said. I said there's many possible. possibilities. Yeah, but, you know, I mean, if that's what people think, I mean, what can I do to uh, break that down from what it sounds to me? And I don't mind saying it's your ear and everyone listening. That sounds completely crazy to me, you know? I mean, for all the things that's going on in this province, to think that Don Dunphy was the focus of the Premier's office and of the RNC to willfully and wanting to go out to drive out that highway on Easter Sunday and shoot the man dead because he had a file that could expose someone else. So that just sounds outlandish to me. Now, you're re it's possible, I suppose. Everything's possible, but that just that sounds is. completely nuts to me. I know. Uh, and I'm going to give you another scenario that All is right. nuts that happened. Uh, Mr. Dunphy's dead. Mm. That man went there by himself to security detail. And now Mr. Dunphy said, that's not, that's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. How do you end up uh, having one person go to a home on Easter Sunday and have a showdown like it's the wild wife? So, once again, you're telling us that someone went out there with the purpose of a firearm showdown. Well, they both had guns. It was a showdown. And Mr. Dunphy was an educated man, but he was a poor man who was on workers' compensation or looking for workers' compensation. Yeah. Therefore, another poor person that made a joke about poverty shut down. But uh, why is the government security detail going into a man's house all by himself? Investigate. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. Like, that's a crazy scenario to me. I would never go to somebody's house if I thought that they were a threat. I do find it extraordinary. People are telling me it's fairly standard practice for the police to operate alone. But it, and I don't know anything about police procedure, but I would think if you're going to a potentially dangerous situation, investigating what is perceived by some to have been a threat, that you would hardly do it alone. Even just for the personal backup and safety of the officers, you'd think it would be a two-man job. But I don't know what the process and protocols are. I assume that when this is investigated, people will try and spell it out for us, lay people like me, because I just don't know, to be honest with you. But it does sound like a particularly odd set of circumstances that the gentleman went by himself. I do agree with that 100%. Like, I can't make heads or tails of that. I know, and we don't know the story behind it. All I know is that the media is being censored. Who's uh, being censored? What media? What media is being you censored? You have to choose your words carefully, Patty. Don't be so foolish, Teresa. Come on, back. I haven't censored myself for five seconds since I sat in the chair at VOCM. I say whatever I please, no one says nothing to me about it. Not my boss, not the president of the company, not the president of NUCAP, and the government, they can be crooked until the cows come home. I couldn't care less. No one censors me. That much I can tell you. I don't know how everyone else in town operates, but no one has ever told me what to say. Not one time ever. And if they did, you'd know full well because I wouldn't be here. Because i got lots of stuff I can do in this world, and one of them is not sit here and be told what to say. I'm not a friggin' trained monkey. I hope to God not. Well, I'm not. You can t take it from me. i got lots of opportunities in this world, and one of them is not sitting here being told what to say. People pulling strings. Oh. That is completely unfounded and 100% ridiculous. Yes. Can only speak uh, for me? Anyway, wrap it up quick. Okay. 
uh, hegemony uh, should not be used in any media. Uh, address the government, address the greed, follow the money trail, and voila, boom, eliminate hegemony and the censorship. Okay. Okay, that's it. it. Thanks, Teresa. All right. Bye. Ciao. Bye. Sorry, it was a little quick in the button there. So here we go. So I'm being called out about I said he shot because of, not because of a tweet, but because he pointed a gun. One thing I can say is he wasn't shot because of a tweet. I'm pretty firm on that one. He was not shot because of a tweet. Now, what went down in that house, as I was careful to say, I don't know. Why don't I know? Because I wasn't there. Neither were you. Those people calling me out. There are reports that he pointed a gun. Is it true? I have no earthly idea. Did he have a gun? Apparently so. There's one found in the house. What exactly went on? I don't know. Does that present the most difficult part of this investigation, that the only one person alive that knows what happened or saw what happened is the officer that reacted to the call? That's true. Will we ever be able to know if with any certainty that we have got the complete and unfiltered truth? I don't know. I just don't know. All I know, and I try to be careful, there's a lot of things that led up to Dunphy's untimely death. And a lot of them are very, very serious. But uh, what I can say, and I'm pretty confident in this, no one got shot because of a tweet. Nobody. None. And if you want to stand by that, then you go ahead. And uh, just from my own perspective, and I can only tell you what I think, if you're going to go around saying that someone got shot dead because of a tweet or that someone sent out a hit squad to take Danny Dunphy out, I'll think you're cracked. And that's fine. You might think I'm cracked. You might think I'm the biggest arsehole on the face of the earth. That's fine. But if that's your stance on things, then I have no choice but to think that you're off your head. And uh, that was the uncensored personal opinion. You want to challenge me on it? Sure, fine. It doesn't matter. I'm not taking it personal. You want to call the program? Sure, do it. Um, <sighs> I never, ever ever said that it was a fact that Dunphy pointed a gun at him when in fact I said I have no idea there are reports that there was the gun by Mr. Dunphy pointing at the cop do I know of course I don't how do I know how do I uh, sure I'm not uh, that I don't know about yeah I wasn't there yeah that's pretty much it I wasn't there and so I don't know what the facts are and either to any of you right I don't know what the conclusion of this investigation will be. Why? Because can't predetermine determined things that I have no idea what's going on. Now, many of you have your own mind made up. That's fine. What can I do about that? I'm not here to convince you. All I can tell you is I don't know. I don't know what happened. I wasn't there. Welcome back to the program. Let's go. Line one. Rodney, you're on the air. Good morning, Patty. How are you this morning? Not bad. You? I'm doing great, thanks. Go right ahead, uh, sir. I just saw him this morning regarding the incident that happened on Sunday. Uh, Mr. Dunphy. Okay. Uh, I love the call and calling in conspiracy theories and whatnot. But I'm just going back to watching them years ago when the RNC uh, weren't allowed to carry a sidearm. Yeah, fair enough. After a few years in the, in the Trump were, were crew, were right? I remember. I'm not quite sure how long that was, but it's not, not so many years ago. And I'm just saying, like, maybe when he went there on, on call, just uh, trying to state some facts, whatever. But he didn't pull through. That's why he went by himself. Well, I mean, uh, uh, fair enough. I mean, if they thought that the threat level was low and they were sent one cop to investigate, look, I I, re I have no idea. I don't know what the protocols are. I don't know what the benchmark or the threshold is for sending more than one officer. I don't know why they send out major tactical teams to arrest someone who's been pulled over for dealing drugs or to arrest Philly Pin. Look, I don't know what the protocols are. I genuinely do not know. Well, exactly. It's my thought, too, but... Like, maybe today, if it wasn't for this new law that they put in with the RNC article carrying sidearm, that today we might be talking about a dead officer, not a, you know, not a disability. So they need a total different scenario on, you know what I mean? Yeah. Just going to be able to that he, he had a firearm, so, you know what I mean? They're trained to do so. 
the police have a lot of training. It doesn't mean that the training always kicks in to the letter of how it was delivered. Do police make mistakes? Of course they do. Have we seen that well documented in the courts in the recent past? Absolutely we have. What happened here? We don't know. I don't know. But many people who are telling me that they know what happened, I just, you know, have a hard time understanding how they've got it figured out. I don't know what the protocol is. I don't know what happened when he knocked on the door. We don't know what kind of... Uh, investigation went in that led the officer to drive out to Mitchell's Brook. I have no idea. I assume and I hope that the investigation is thorough and independent and we get to as close to the truth as humanly possible. Will we ever know exactly every single detail? Once again, I don't know. People will always question uh, the veracity of one witness. I mean, the gentleman shot Don Dunphy dead. And so what we will be able to glean from his account or his testimony here, I really don't know. But I do know a lot of people will not trust what comes out of his mouth. A lot of people will have no faith in the investigation, and that, I think, is the reality of life, and that's what we're facing here. Yeah, exactly. They, they can say there's three sides to every story. There's the Aaron uh, Holmes, the officer side, Mr. Duffy's side, and then there's the truth. But we're not going to see one side because he's the only guy living, so, you know what I mean? Yep. We'll never get the full truth. Well, I think that's a big concern, and it's a fair comment. People will always wonder whether or not we got to the truth. That's absolutely right, and I can't disagree with you because I think the vast majority of people will always have big questions surrounding what happened because there's only one person left to tell the tale. Fair comment, and no one else can... I can't dispute it because it sounds legitimate to me. Yeah, exactly. Well, you have a wonderful day, my buddy, and uh, thanks for taking the time to talk to me. All the very best. Thanks for the call. Thank you. Okay, bye-bye. bye-bye. Uh, will we take a break or talk to Mike? Let's talk to Mike. Get two calls in. Let's go to line four. Mike, you're on the air. Hello? Hello there, sir. Yeah, I'm sorry. I thought you were going to break. No, you go right ahead. Yeah. Sign your mind. Anyway, I'm uh, a bit perturbed with this workers' compensation, Mr. Dunphy. Okay, go ahead. Uh, I only hope that if any investigation comes into this, there's an investigation involving uh, workers because it's I don't know, but to me, you know, when workers' compensation gets that bad, and I know it can be that bad to drive a man nuts, and I was investigated one time because I was on workers' compensation a good many years ago. They put me through hell and back, and I was only too happy to get clear of them. Mm -hmm. But uh, I said one time, at, at the time, it was 20, 30 years ago, and there was a terrorist attack somewhere in the world at the time or whatever, and I said, if there's ever a terrorist attack here, I said, and he hits uh, the workers' compensation building, it'd be a wasted shot. And I got investigated for that. But what I'm saying is that, look, if everything comes out of this, we've got two victims now, we've got a policeman, we've got Mr. Duffy. And this all started because of workers' compensations from what I'm gathering and what I'm hearing on the news. And I think that there should, if any investigation is done, any inquiry or anything is done, it should be done starting with workers' compensation of how they drove so many people almost to this point of, you know, you might have made a mistake, you shot his mouth off, upset, whatever. And then the ultimate outcome is this. But the thing is, as far as I'm concerned, it all goes back to workers' compensation. And what that building down there, as far as I'm concerned, is uh, one of the most inhumane places ever on earth. It's cruel. Yeah, I mean, we hear a lot of stories where people have absolutely been drove uh, around the bend based on their dealings right. with the Compensation Commission. Now, is it all because they have uh, hopes or expectations of what can and cannot be done that don't fall within the legislation available? That may be. Have some people been unfairly treated? Quite possibly. Has the appeal process been stalled and delayed and uh, really adversely affected people's lives? No question. We've got documented stories on exactly that. So it's, it's a problem. And you're right. I think if we focus on exactly what went on in the house, and we have to know because someone was shot dead, but there's an awful lot that led to that day. And Mr. Dunphy and I dealt with each other many, many times. His calls would range from the state of the roads in Mount Carmel to medical marijuana that he was hoping to continue to be allowed to grow, to deal with his pain management as an injured worker, all the way to workers' compensation. And then he, of course 
was very concerned about the greed factor of the corporate community and the government delivery of services. So it was wide-ranging, his, his concerns. And he spiraled to a point where he was absolutely living in despair. You could tell quite clearly. I'm not just saying that anybody, whatever he wrote on Twitter, was or was not a threat. All I know is that Dunphy was uh, a man who was very, very sad and angry and frustrated, and all of it for legitimate reasons. And so I think the system and the rest of us kind of failed on Dunphy. And other than that, why? I'm not sure well, what to say. You know, I, I agree with you there. And uh, the thing is, it's, uh, you know, uh, like I said, I got no use for workers' conversation. And after I got off workers' conversation, I went on my own debt and whatever. Yep. I never paid them anything that I wasn't forced to pay. And I told them so, too, that the only way that I'd give them any money was when I was absolutely forced to. And whatever money I got away with without paying them, I got away with it. And yeah. I don't mind saying it, and I told them too. And uh, I got off workers' compensation. I started my own business. Then the first thing I had to do was fork over money to workers' compensation in order to prepay it mm -hmm. so that I could get a letter that I was, you know, free of uh, in debt to uh, workers' compensation to go to work. And, you know, they made it almost impossible. But anyway, I did it. I got care of them. And thanks be to God, I haven't had any dealings with him now for years. But, uh, you know, I just don't have any use for him and never will. Uh, uh, listen, and fair enough, that's your personal experience, and uh, I'm glad you took the time to call the program on it this morning. Anything else very quickly, sir, before I go to the break? That's it. I like coming on the loose, but I haven't got enough time. But anyway, I'll get you another day. No sweat. Anytime. All the best. Thanks, buddy. Okay, bye-bye. Uh, welcome back to the program. Let's go. Uh, line number seven. Good morning, Catherine. You're on the air. Hi. Good morning, Patty. Good morning. I'm a first-time caller. Thanks very much for calling. Oh, you're welcome. And I, um, I really enjoy your program. Uh, it usually takes a lot now to get me riled up to phone uh, open line. But this morning I have to comment on the, the uh, woman caller uh, that was there with her uh, conspiracy theories. And I think she's totally off the wall. Well, conspiracy theories are easy for people to latch on to. When there's so many questions and so few answers, then it's the immediate reaction. It doesn't make anyone a bad person to have a conspiracy theory. Some people go too far, and I don't know why or what motivates it, but every time we ask questions here, it can be easily characterized as a conspiracy theory when people are just simply asking questions and wondering what may or may not have happened. So I understand why she did well, but she went a bit overboard. Now, come on, when she was talking about, um, you know, her her different uh, theories, and I mean, uh, about somebody going there in a file and all this. And, I mean, I thought she was either researching for a, a mystery novel or watching too much TV, you know. Yeah. Uh, but the thing is that, you know, my condolences this morning go out to the family. Uh, they certainly do. And um, I'm also thinking about the person who... Uh, fired the shot because, I mean, uh, we don't know what he's going through. And nobody's mentioned that. Well, we tried to mention it. You know, a police officer, uh, despite not knowing what happened, uh, I imagine it's a very traumatic experience for someone to have shot someone else dead. I don't know if this particular officer has ever discharged his weapon in the course of uh, business or the course of uh, performing his duties or not, but I imagine it's pretty traumatic. Uh, if you're well, someone's a stone-cold killer, then uh, maybe they get off on it, but I assume it's traumatic for 99% of the people. Well, it has to be. And, you know, Patty, as far as you being muscled, that's not possible. I mean, I don't know you personally, but uh, I've heard your comments on, on uh, uh, the open line numerous times. And some things that you have said, I say, oh, my God, did he really say that? And, um, you know, I just think you're a wonderful host. You do a great job. Thanks. And, I mean, and, you know, I'm not always right, nor do I know all the answers. I say what I think, and nobody else tells me what to do or feel or think or say. Yeah, that's but all see, I Patty, you're always honest, and that's what I like about you. I appreciate your comments and the kind words this morning. Anything else you'd like to say, Catherine? No, just keep up the good work. Thank you very much, and I appreciate your time. Hopefully you call again. Thank you. Okay, take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. That's for all. Line two, Jerry, you're on the air. Who? Jerry, you, sir, you're up. Yeah, well, I just want to make a comment about the... Uh the, the, the man Dumpy was shot by the Eagle Flag of Saturday. My condolences to the family right off the bat. Certainly. 
But, uh, you know, uh, how many uh, people have been shot since they had their uh, revolvers? I don't know. I really don't know the answer to that. Some, some told me it's been, was it 1988 someone wrote to me? That, or 1998? Oh, yeah. I'll have yeah. to have another look here now because it's zipping by with all the messages I got today. I don't know how many people have been shot by a police officer. I really, I genuinely don't know. I'll try to find out. I think the constabulary are too trigger happy. You know, like, uh, just to shoot this man the way he, the, the, the way they shot him or the way the way ports come out. You know, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's kind of hard. Hard to accept. Yeah, um, well, not knowing what happened is also makes it even harder to, uh, have a firm grip on whether or not it's acceptable or illegitimate or criminal. Like, I, I just don't know. I don't know why. Like, why do you think they're trigger happy? Because Mr. Dunphy was shot? Is that? I don't know, like, uh, well, him and a few more people have been, uh, shot with, with the, by, by the constabulary. And <laughs> I found out that they were, they were a bit too, too trigger happy. Okay. You know, like, uh, it's possible, I don't know, like, uh, there was one in Cornerbrook, and there was one or two in St. John's were killed, were, were shot by the Newfoundland Constabulary. And uh, I think the Newfoundland Constabulary is too trigger happy. Since they got the revolvers or got the sidearms in, uh, in 1988, uh, you know, like, uh, uh, just listen to the news about, the, you know, the way they, they handle themselves with the, with, with the revolvers. You know, <laughs> it's, it's frightening. Uh, see, I don't feel like I'm in jeopardy of being shot, uh, so I don't know exactly. I don't know how many people have been shot, and there's, as I recognize and remember some of the uh, stories that you refer to. Uh, there was investigations into all, so I really I, I don't know. But I, what I will do is I'll see if I can not research how many times uh, officers have discharged their weapon in the course of duty and what the results were and the investigations. I'll try to do some more reading and research on it. It would be, would be nice, Patty, like uh, I listen to your show on a regular basis because the way you comment on certain things, you know, I listen to them. I appreciate you listening. I'm really glad you called today. Let's see what I can find out, and I think it's an important part of the conversation. People would like to know those numbers. I think it'll add some context to the story. Fair ball. Very good. I appreciate your time, sir. Thank you. All the best. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Welcome back to the program. Line number four. John, you're on the air. Hi, Patty. Uh, just a few comments on the don't be shooting in St. Mary's. First, uh, my condolences to the family and the community. Mm -hmm. uh, a few questions, I guess. Uh, I find it odd, or I guess the question is, why was this constable in St. Mary's on a Sunday when the perceived threat was made on a Friday? W was he in civilian clothes, carrying his weapon with no backup, and failed to notify the RCMP that he was going into their jurisdiction to do any police work. No idea. Those, all of those things, to me, absolutely don't make any sense from a common sense perspective or an, a police perspective. I mean, uh, I, I don't know if he was in his civilian clothes or if he was in, you know, his police uniform. Apparently he was I in plain clothes in an unmarked car. That's what we're told. On a Sunday, when it but when the it Sunday, what does the Sunday got to do with this? In uh, all honesty, okay, okay, let's forget Sunday. Let's yeah. forget. Let's let's say that he was he was in the community three days after the perceived threat. Now, if the threat was was legitimate in in his mind, my God, if someone is threatened to do harm to the premier or to a cabinet minister, I would think the same day or the same hour would be more appropriate, not three days later. It just doesn't make sense. Well, you I know, mean, I don't know. What about if they just perceived that the threat level was low and wanted to go out and speak to Mr. Dunphy about what they had read and what they think is appropriate or not and what's potentially criminal or not? Like, I don't know if they thought that Dunphy was going to come roaring into town and shoot the premier. Like, I don't know what anybody thought. And that's part of where the, the great unknowns that we're facing. It's hard to say why the delay. Apparently, he was on his normal shift. And so if that's the case, I mean, I don't even know if Sunday was the first day shift. I really don't know. They're the things we're trying to figure out. 
I don't know either. But uh, firstly, why didn't he why didn't he defer this to the RCMP and their jurisdiction? Well, because he was investigating uh, something on behalf of the premier security detail of which he was a member. I assume. In, in a jurisdiction that he is not supposed to be in. Well, the RNC, the RNC is not forbidden from any jurisdiction in the entire province. By right. himself. Well, I don't know. I mean, I don't know but, why he's by himself. I assume because they didn't think he, that Mr. Dunphy was dangerous, I guess. Like, I don't know. Maybe, maybe he should have done some research on Mr. Dunphy's attitude and, and state of mind and his situation. I don't know if he did that. Well, that might be the reason that we went out Sunday, not Friday. Like, these are good questions. And I have no earthly idea if they fall in line with police protocol, as should be very clearly spelled out, uh, what level of investigation went in to determine what level of threat Mr. Dunphy may or not uh, be. So there are questions. I certainly hope, to your point, sir, that whatever the investigation entails, we need and we require answers to those, those exact questions. Totally agree. No question. I was listening to the news yesterday, or watching the news, and the premier came on and indicated that he had made a phone call mm -hmm. to the officer involved. I thought very inappropriate for the premier to inject himself why, why is that? in the middle of this. Why? Be because he is the premier of all the people, not only this police officer, the, the Dunphy family, the people of St. Mary's and the people of the province. And and he is the I guess the ultimate police officer in the province. No, he's not. That's not that's not true at all. He is not the oh. ultimate police officer in this province. Of course he's not. He's not he's not a police officer. Oh, I didn't say he was, but no. he has he, he he speaks for the people, not I, I thought it was inappropriate that he would he would pick up the phone and call the person who shot a man in St. Mary's and we don't know how that happened. Right, but until I mean, that happened, un until that's resolved, I don't think it would be appropriate for the premier to pick up a phone and call anybody that was involved in the situation. Would it be appropriate to have called Mr. Dumpy's family? Anyone not directly involved in the in the shooting, probably yes. But not yeah. someone who's directly involved in this situation. I just thought it was inappropriate. Yeah, fair I, enough. He was also yeah. a friend of his, as we understand. And I don't know how inappropriate or not it was. A lot of people are latching on to that. I, I personally haven't come to uh, any real declaration on as to whether he should or should not. I guess it was a man who was working for him in the premier security detail, a gentleman he knew personally and professionally in the past when he was indeed a police officer. I guess that's why he did it. And whether or not it's uh, appropriate, I guess, hopefully someone will also tell us and maybe some judicial findings will help clear that picture up but you're right it's an interesting question and i don't know and the final one i have for you is uh the idea of allowing blue to investigate blue whether it be rcmp investigating rnc rnc investigating rcmp or someone from bc in blue coming to newfoundland we'll never find out the correct or, or the legitimate answers to this situation if we allow that to happen. You don't have any faith in, say, for instance, if the OPP are brought in to investigate this issue? No, sir. So who could indeed replace those folks? Because remember, every time we appoint so-called quasi-independent bodies, if they don't come back with what people want for answers, then they don't trust them either. So how do you suggest we approach this? That's why we pay the premier and the cabinet ministers of the province to come up with a, a committee a group or, or but aren't they whatever. the exact wrong Two. people to appoint a group? Maybe. Yeah. I mean, Maybe. that's, that's I, don't, I don't have an answer as to what group would do this, but a group outside of Blue has to do it because I think anybody that's been around long enough know that Blue have to support Blue. I mean, the RCP and his farmers depend on the RNC to cover their backs in num numerous situations and vice versa. And it's not any blue is going to indict, in my opinion, blue unless it unless it's it's beyond belief. Yeah. I it's... Think if if we want to get to the bottom of this and have the people of the province accept the the outcome I think it has to be outside of blue. Uh, and really a, a lot of people will agree. People suggest, you know, judicial inquiry, the coroner's inquest, that type of approach, and that may indeed be prudent. And I don't know if we've come to the end of the conversation as to how that will happen. Currently it's the RCMP, do. but I think there will be a lot of debate as to whether or not that's appropriate and will satisfy the best interests of the people. I really appreciate your time this morning, sir. Okay, thank you. All the best. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Um,
Yeah, so a lot to discuss. Uh, there, and there's plenty of issues that are absolutely open for discussion, debate, conversation here in the program. If you choose to switch the channel and go somewhere else, different direction, that's absolutely up to you. If you want to talk about Mr. Dunphy or anything else under the sun, you pick up the phone and give us a shout. We are now taking a break for the 11 o'clock news, but then we're coming back. This is Open Line on the VOCM CFCB Big Land FM radio network. Welcome back to the show. Line one, Fred, you're on the air. Hi, Fred. Patty. Yes, sir. Congratulations on getting your head shaved. Thanks very much. Appreciate it. And congratulations on raising uh, that much needed money for charity. Yeah, no, it's good. We feel good about it. Uh, and sharing it with my son was terrific. Well, geez, that was fantastic, right? I mean, I, you know, that's fantastic. I mean, you... Uh, you're, I tell you, you're doing more to serve the community than anybody else I can think of in history. I mean, you are uh, <laughs> you're super. No, you are, Patty. You are. You know. Thanks a lot, Toos. Appreciate uh, it very much. The, the other thing, they had this guy, um, this police officer, he got 10 months in jail, or, um, I think yesterday or the day before, or whatever. Uh, the guy was out in about an hour and a half, right? I mean, on appeal. I mean, that, that has to break all records, right, to get, to get, to get a... A date before the Court of Appeal, that is just absolutely amazing. I was surprised. Uh, most people have to wait like four, five, six months before they get out, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, number one. Number two, uh, you know, where, where the RCMP, and, and the main reason I'm calling, would the RCMP have jurisdictional relevance with respect to uh, uh, Sam and Aaron, Mitchell Harbor, et cetera, et cetera? So, you know, uh, usually what's done in those situations is the RNC may be able to go anywhere they want, but... Uh, they, there's usually a phone call made, you know, like, hey, we're coming in, you know, and um, just a matter of courtesy, unwritten rule, you know, and uh, we're going to go down and talk to this guy, or maybe you can tell us a bit about him. And usually there's an RCMP car that goes along with the, with the RNC officer, right, just for backup or whatever. The other thing is this guy didn't have to open his door, right, because obviously this guy didn't have a search warrant, okay? Yeah. I don't think he was charged with threatening the premier or threatening... Uh, two MHAs who are already dead either, right? You know, uh, so you know the fact that he got into the door by some sort of method, uh, you know, ended up with this guy, Mr. Dunphy, uh, been dead. I also don't agree with uh, you know James and uh, uh, yeah, what do you call it? the chief of police, uh, James and Davis, talking with the officer. I mean, I mean seriously. I mean, that, that's a bit much, right? That's that's almost like a situation where you had Tim Buckle out in the corner book uh, talking with. Uh, but what, what, uh, do you, what do you think the premier could have said to jeopardize the investigation? I'm having a hard time with that one too. For instance, you got to think about it because both already. are police officers, right? Well, one's a retired police officer, one's a current police officer. Like, what would Davis have been saying? They're both government payroll, right? Yeah, but, I mean, all the cops are. But what would Davis say to him to jeopardize the investigation? Hey, don't tell him what happened. Why would he be doing something to protect know, that cop? Like, I'm just having a hard time understanding what the point is on that front. That's well, all. Well, I mean, it's not Davis, it's not, it's not James's uh, or Davis's job to call the police officer and offer support. The police have people hired to do that, to, to offer psychological support, okay? Now, this guy's still walking around, right? So, you know, I mean, whether or not this guy pointed a long gun at him, I mean, I find that a little bit hard to believe. Uh, Why is that? Why is that hard to believe? Just a question, because I don't know. Well, he had no history of doing it. He had no criminal record, okay? Um, he uh, no history of violence. He was well-known in the community. Um and if anything, he was probably precipitated to pull that long gun. You know, like we don't know what happened. We weren't there. But the bottom line is that's the bottom line. If if you don't if there's only one person there, one guy dies, dead men tell no tales. I mean and um, uh, I mean this is the blackest stain on the PC government since Davis got in. Okay, and then Davis turns around and says, we, oh, we don't, I didn't know anything about it. Here's an interesting point uh, about cops investigating cops and what have you. So, last well, call before... Well, cops this. investigating cops, we've had the OPP for so long, mm -hmm. you know, BC I wouldn't trust. They've had, they have to have about 10 people in custody who happened to die while they were in custody. Um, i got no problem with the OPP coming down 
and checking things out. Yeah, and a, lot of, a lot of people are skeptical. I mean, but yeah, oh, here we are. are. Sean Kelly on the could, West. What you could do is go down, I don't know, maybe go to Boston or, or, or New England and get some out of town. Uh, police officers. But aren't they also, I mean, what's the difference between the Boston Police Force and the Ontario Police Force? They're either closely linked, intertwined, or it's thin blue line, or whatever the case may be. I think, you know, I don't know you who the right. appropriate Look, body when is. You, got, you are right. When you got blue investigating blue, you, you know, you're going to, there's going to be a bias, obviously, right? Here's, here's a point I'd like to make, and you tell me what you think. So people are pointing out, and I think this is an important question, is why was there only one police officer investigating a perceived threat at Don Dunphy's house on that fateful day? Not only that, but he was supposed to be protecting the Premier at the hockey game in paradise, right? Well, apparently Davis says that he wants to go to some of these things without his security detail. He was quick to say that. I don't know if he's mandated to have it or gets to decide for himself or what constitutes having the detail in place. Like, I really don't know that either, and I'm, we're trying to find all these things out. Well, you got a chief of staff there, too. Joe Brown, right? I mean, he's, uh, that got to do with it? well, he's ch he's chief of staff, yeah, which means he, he's the second in command. Okay, he's he's over uh, the deputy premier when it comes to. I mean, he got the uh, premier's ear. Yes, he does. Yeah, he does. Okay, no question. and uh, he makes more than the premier makes. By the way, okay, <laughs> just to let you know. And uh, <clears throat> the money thing is not a big deal, but my point is, no. the police listen to the police, and and he respects. He respected Joe Brown enough to put him in that position she was at. Yep. And, uh, but you you are right. I mean, to go down there and to be safe and to make sure justice was done, that could have been handled in a totally different way. Um, a phone call could have been made to this guy that maybe he should get a, a, a meeting should have been set up, and uh, they could have met him at the local detachment with his lawyer. Okay, with Mr. Dunphy's lawyer present, and a conversation could have been made about, you know, what's this uh, Twitter thread all about, and that could have been explained, and the police would have said, oh, okay, no big deal. We thought it was an active threat. Well, okay. I mean, sure, if you're asked, are you threatening the premier, sure, your reaction is going to be no. There's no threat to the premier on those Twitter threads. Did you read through all those? Yeah, I read lots of stuff. And plus, Mr. Dunphy has sent me a lot of private There's no messages. threat to the premier's life. And then the premier gets Imagine if we says, didn't oh, investigate it. Imagine if we premier. didn't investigate some of that stuff and something happened. I've, see, I've seen the whole thread. Yeah, but uh, whatever. Mr. Dunphy uh, sent thousands of tweets. Imagine if the uh, police, any branch of law enforcement, did not investigate every single thing that they perceived as a threat and someone came in and shot the Premier dead. Just imagine if they didn't investigate everything that came across social media, email, letter sent to the, the office, phone calls. Don't, the police don't have the manpower to investigate every threat. Well, I think they will investigate every threat if they think that the premier's life has been threatened. And Everything the premier family. has done to this point, reversing the uh, 29, Bill 29, yeah. getting rid of people who, sh who don't have any seats and who don't want to take a chance to lose an election, uh, and, and all the good things he's done is totally erased by this. Well, okay. Some people will think that. I do appreciate your time this morning. I'm late for the break, Fred, but I'm glad you called. Yeah, it's just a shame, uh, Patty, that... That, you know, that this guy, you know, he, you know he, he's dead, right? You know what I mean? Of course it is. It is the heartbreaking and piece of the story. When of this, course. When, when this police officer drove up to the house and he saw that it was a ramshackle check and whatever, you know, he said, oh, yeah, okay. He, he formed a bias in his mind and said, well, yeah. I would imagine the police deal with an awful lot of uh, people who are living in less than East End muckety muck mansions, you know, and plus they deal with so called pretend rich people who are the elite of society. They deal with them too. I think the police are pretty open to uh, going to a home or an apartment where they are expecting it to be just like they might have seen with Mr. Dunphy. I think his case was very clear. He was quick to point out he was living in poverty, so I don't think they expected to find him in some uh, glorious palace. I think they were not surprised when they saw how he lived. Because well, he was very clear officer, to tell us. And, I mean, if, if they had approached okay. an $8 million house, I'm sure there wouldn't have been just one officer, right? Oh, I don't know. If it's, why would you say that, though? Like, I don't understand that either. Why yeah, would they send... Because it's all politics. You, you know that, right? No, I don't know that. You're telling me they would send two officers to a rich guy's house as opposed oh, they to one they to a poor guy's house? Two, Two or four. They wouldn't just send one. And, and, and I because mean. Because what's is, the height and level of threat at the rich guy's house? Just curious. That he was. 
Like well, I mean, the, the, somebody came to my house today, and a police officer, yeah. and said, uh, you make threats to social media? And I'll say, excuse me, I said, uh, um, do you have a warrant to come into my house? I'll say, uh, they'll say no, and I'll say, well, uh, you're going to have to charge me, or here's the number of my lawyer. Yeah, okay. but we don't know what Mr. Dumpy said either. He might have said, come in, or he might have said, get lost. The cop might have, he might have happened in the porch. He might have, look, we don't know any of these things, and they're good questions, and I don't have the answers. Of course I don't have the answers. He had no right to enter into Buddy's house. Unless the Buddy said, come in. Yeah, well... <laughs> and that's undeniable, right? If Dumphy said, come in, then I guess that's that. Yeah, yeah. The other thing, too, I wanted to mention was about this guy, Kelly. I mean, the, the, the Judge Gorman, I mean, he was so pissed. He said if the Crown had have, uh, offered him, if the Crown had went by a way of indictment for the diverting suspicion charge, they, he would have got 20 months. Well, I don't know. I mean, there's a, like, there's and, a and good example. He said, he said, Just yeah, one I mean, second. Let me every now and then jump in here. Uh, when, there's an example of the police investigating the police. And the police don't bring forward the charges. The police bring it to the Crown prosecutors who determine what the charge will uh, that's brought eventually in the court of law. So the yeah. cops have investigated the cops. Sean Kelly is has been sentenced to time in prison. Oh, yes, but my there point is, whenever it's a cop or correctional officer, they only go summary conviction to Crown. They never go by indictment. Okay. Uh, anyway, I'm really late on the break, but Fred, interesting conversation. I'm glad you called, sir. Now listen, Patty, do you think uh, Max will be playing in, in the playoffs for Habs or what? No. You, well, mean, you think he, he's out? He won't be out for the whole thing, but he looks like he might be hurt worse than we think he is, yeah. Oh, shit. Yes, I know. I'm not happy about it either. Yeah, I Off I go, Fred. Thanks, bud. Take care, man. All the best. Bye-bye. I will say this, you know, so you don't trust the police to investigate the police, and I understand that. And because that's a built-in uh, suspicion or skepticism that people will have. But at the exact same time, you're saying if a second cop had to go, then we'd be able to hear from a witness to the shooting. But w which is it? You don't trust the police to investigate the police, but you trust the partner of this guy who shot Dunphy because you trust him or you don't trust him. Or what exactly is that? Anyway. Welcome back to the show. Line 5, Albin, you're on the air. Hello. Good morning, sir. How are you? I'm fine. How about you? Oh, I'm wonderful, buddy. Uh, I got uh, I could talk for a week, I suppose. Winston Churchill once said that if you want me to talk for a for a minute, give me two weeks' notice. If you want me to talk for two weeks, give me a, a minute's notice. I'll give you ten seconds' notice to speak for four minutes. All right, buddy. Go for it. But anyway, uh, I want to talk about uh, uh, pass on my condolences uh, first of all to Mr. Tuffy's family mm -hmm. in uh, in Mitchell's Brook. I had a call earlier this morning informing me of that, and, and uh, it's scary. It's a scary situation, you know. Are we living in a police state, I wonder? No, you know, that, no, that's just not, no. thoughts. And uh, I don't want to get into a discussion that's on fine. that, uh, you know, but uh, I want to talk about a few other things. You know, I'm, I'm a retired steel worker from Labrador City, mm -hmm. and I only retired a little while ago, and I worked here for 40 years, and I've lived here for 43. I... Uh, I think I could be considered a, a Labradorian pretty okay. well. Very well. You know, and I had some issues with the Church of All situation with the muskrat with regard to, uh, to to people in there from especially Quebec. I have no issues with Newfoundlanders. I'm a Newfoundlander myself, you know, uh, but uh, they've uh, they filled the place. They brought in new contractors from Quebec. They, they, they filled their uh, employee list with uh, people from Quebec, and, and I don't... Uh, I don't agree with that, regardless of uh, race, color, or creed. I am not a racist. I just, uh, I just think that uh, Labrador residents are Labrador residents, not steel residents, or not uh, uh, Montemi. They, they, you know, they're they're uh, they're people from Labrador, and I believe uh, the, the agreement, because we finally get a little bit of justice. Should be that if you if you were from Labrador, then just naturally you should go to work there. I mean, I've seen roads blocked in Newfoundland Island because someone come in and took a, a truck go to Cape and, and try to bring it out to the next community. I mean, fear is fear, you know. And another thing I want to say, you know, in fairness to all this, is that I would like to thank Mr. Hurl McCurdy when he came in town and he he had the decency to meet with the union leaders of these communities mm -hmm. because they are suffering severely. All the union towns are suffering severely with the devastation that's going on in the economy today, with the price of iron ore, with everything else. In all fairness, 
the other two leaders who came in this town should have had a decency to do the same, to meet with our union leaders. Union is as much a part of our life as is the company. They are our dinner table discussions. And I'm telling you right now, my friend, what's going on in this province today with the police state that is there, and it is a police state, I fear to go uptown. When I see officers with guns on their side and hands sticking out like, uh, like Apollon Cassidy, and I'm going back a long ways. If it's a police state, I'll just say this, and then we've got to wrap it up. If it was a police state, then you can count the days then. Because that's what happens in a police state. People who say the things you're doing, they end up in similar circumstances, if not the exact same circumstances, Mr. Dumpy. So I think people either don't know what a police state means or they're just quick to say it for whatever reason. But it's, you know, I, well, you I know think what? it's no, I do know what a police state means. Yes, it means that you can't say what you just said. That's right. That's what it means. And no. Now, do I fear that? Are they going to show my house today and gun me down? Uh, because I just said that? No. You know, I do not know, my friend, what we are coming to. I do know that the day that we use, lose union density is a day that everybody suffers, union or non-union. Uh, yeah, I'm Someone surprised. should start making a move. No one has a right to come into our province, take from us the natural resources, and leave nothing behind but a big black hole on employment and poverty. It's a popular opinion held by many. Uh, you've had the last word this morning, Alvin. I'm glad you took the time to call the program. Thank you, sir. Uh -huh.